so much for joining me today. I uh, am really uh, so excited that we're able to have you and your company at the seminar this year. Uh, we've had so many people asking about electrical stimulation, uh, and uh, I was just very pleased to be able to include that. Now, one of the things that uh, I think was so powerful uh, about you uh, and your company is that you've taken electrical stimulation, you've refined it further. Could you, could you give my uh, tribe a, a, just a high level of what the difference is between the two? Yeah, absolutely. So with new fit, the, the name itself means neurological fitness. And everything that we do has, is, is done through the lens of trying to make the nervous system healthier. And so there's different ways that that, that influences our work. In terms of the technology itself, what we have, it is a type of electrical stimulation, so it gets confused with the TENS units and Russian stim and interferential and the other things that are out there. But in many ways, it has almost the exact opposite effect. And then that allows us to do some things that you can't do with traditional devices. So the difference is really twofold. It's both the technology and the approach. In terms of the technology, most electrical stimulation is alternating current, whereas ours is direct current. Most electrical stimulation, because it's alternating current, it causes muscles to contract and, and fight against each other. And there can be some benefit in that, but there can also be some problems because that tends to instill inefficient movement patterns. And it trains the body to resist its own movements and to move like if you were driving a car hitting the throttle and the brake pedal at the same time, you'd be wasting all this energy overcoming the resistance of the brake pedal. Similarly, the body learns to move in that like it's it's having to waste energy to overcome the resistance of its own opposing muscles so in contrast to that our device preferentially promotes lengthening of muscles so for for movement patterns for reducing spasticity for example in someone who has ms there's a profound difference and then the because of those differences it really allows us to work in a different paradigm because with traditional electrical stimulation you're causing contraction and really trying to use the current to artificially create that contraction in the muscles. And a lot of times people learn to rely on that outside current in order to use their muscles. Sort of like if, you know, using a crutch or a foot orthotic. And we're trying to, to do something that's, that's really different. We're trying to, rather than creating a, a signal to contract the muscle, we're trying to create a neurological input that allows that person's brain and that person's nervous system to move better on its own. So that when we take our device off of someone at the end of a session, they are usually moving better. They have more range of motion, less pain, more strength, better quality of movement. And that benefit stays around for longer because we're teaching them how to do that for themselves. And so that difference, you know, because it's not as much about contraction, because at the same level of current, we can, instead of causing contraction, we can actually cause muscles to relax or be more neutral, minimize those protective contractions. We can create significant amounts of input into the body and all of the associated opportunities for neurological change and adaptation. And we can, we can go about go about the, the therapeutic process in this different way. So the, the technology is different and then the approach is different. So one of the things, for example, that that technology allows us to do is this diagnostic process. So we can scan around on the body and because the, the waveform in our device is engineered to mimic as closely as possible, the same signals that the body sends naturally during movement, the body is receiving a signal. If, I, if I'm scanning around on my arm with, with this electrode, if I'm scanning here, this tissue is getting the same signal as if it was moving. Like if I was out working out or, you know, playing in an ice hockey game or really carrying groceries, you know, real, real world activities, then I go here and this tissue is being loaded and this tissue is being loaded, getting the same signal as if it was actually moving. And so because of this unique effect, we can go through this process and identify exactly where underlying dysfunction is in the body or where there's aberrant neurological signaling 
because as we scan around on the body, of course, we should be able to move anywhere and everywhere. The lines of communication should be open between and among all areas of the body. And when things are working well and we go through that process, things, the, the signal feels pleasant and it's pretty easy to handle. Only if there is underlying dysfunction where the, the body is limiting or governing or restricting movement in that area, then it'll, it'll fight against that signal. It'll feel more intense. Or if there's a deficit in communication, perhaps from something like MS, if that area of the body hasn't been used recently because there's less neurological signal going there because of the underlying MS process, then the body also will fight against that because it will perceive that signal as new, as different. If there's movement coming from an area that hasn't been moving or hasn't been activated recently, that's going to be new and threatening to the body. And so it will, it'll respond. And by, by seeing where those responses happen, we know where the underlying dysfunctions are and we can make our intervention a lot more targeted. And so that's, that's one of the major differences in terms of the application. And then again, because of the unique effect of the current, once, once we found those areas and we're stimulating them, we actually have our patients and clients go through movements. So we're doing different movement patterns, different corrective exercises, reprogramming and repatterning movements while at the same time teaching the body to start incorporating those muscles that we're stimulating. And so we can have a, a much greater opportunity to make, make changes in how people move, how, how well they're neurologically activating certain areas of the body. So you're, you're having people complete uh, specified exercises, movements, as you're also applying this electrical current uh, during that movement pattern. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest differences because traditional electrical stimulation, usually people will lie down on a table or sit and, and just, it's a more of a passive modality where it's just, you know, the, the electrodes are on them, but they're not doing very much. And when we do move, that allows us to do some very, very cool things. The, the, you know, the biggest is probably how quickly we get to see the changes in the effects of corrective exercises. Cause normally if people are trying to work on a movement pattern, it can take thousands and thousands of repetitions to actually start to see some of those changes. Whereas if we have the machine on and we're sending that signal, we can see those same sorts of changes in dozens of reps. And so we can really streamline and fast track those adaptation processes. Now, I, I know at the seminar, uh, you were really quite busy with people coming to your table mm -hmm. uh, and having some experience with the device. Um, get, did people uh, do some exercises, some movement patterns while you were stimulating them? Yeah, for sure. So we had several people in, in wheelchairs or, or walkers there and we were able to do sessions with them. And if they're, if they were limited in the kinds of movements they would do, they would still do, uh, you know, maybe some knee extensions. If they're sitting in a wheelchair, just bend and straighten the, the leg or, do movements with their feet and ankles. And we saw some really interesting experiences and, and responses. And it was, it was actually very cool. You know, we ended up working with between 20 and 30 MS patients there at the seminar and saw some, some really cool things happen, even in just one or two demonstration sessions. So we had, we had a few people that had issues with drop foot and, you know, the foot, their foot would catch as they're, as they're walking because they can't, lift it up properly, activate the muscles on the front of the shin to lift the foot up. And uh, we had a few people come back to the booth either a few hours later or the next day, and they would say that they were walking more smoothly, their foot wasn't catching as much on the ground. Um, so that was very cool. We had a few people come back to the booth and tell us they had more sensation in their feet. Uh, one come back and say they had uh, more sensation and better function in, in the hand that had not seen any improvement in a few years. And we saw some, some really cool, really cool things happen. So it was, it was great. So uh, incredibly useful, uh, interesting stuff there. 